Check the description for the following discount codes. It actually makes a change to have in what I'm gonna call a reasonably priced set of sort of high-end pedals. They're not the highest of high-end, there's no hydraulics on these Simforge pedals, but they are of course load cell, and they're built really well. The fit and finish is excellent. There's quite a few customization options as far as how you install them and a vast array of elastomers you can choose to fit to customize how you want the brake pedal to feel. There's angle adjustment, and we'll, I'll show you most of this in detail, but first of all, as I say, they're reasonably priced. Let's have a quick look at the Simforge website and see exactly how much they go for, because again, there's a few different options depending exactly what you want. What I have here is the Dark Edition three pedal set. So let's just bring that up. And even that has a range of options, 308 pounds or 346 pounds. So the, the difference here is whether you choose just to have the stock elastomers or whether you want the pro elastomer kit to come with them or not. So this is what I have here. The Dark Edition simply means that the aluminium profile, which it is attached to, is powder coated black rather than just left bare aluminium. Like if you look at this picture, this is the non-dark edition. You can see the alley profile is silver. And if you look under there, look, you can see the corner brackets are silver as well. So that's the only difference between the dark edition and the non-dark edition. And the cost of the non-dark edition, as you can see here, £269 or £285. So they're charging, what, an extra sort of, what's that, two set, 38 quid for the powder coating. Um, in fact, there's a few, there's a few sort of upsells here that I think are a little on the pricey side. The pedals themselves are, are, are nicely priced, but £38 just to have the powder coated version seems quite strong. And if you're to actually buy this elastomer kit separately, look, it's £69.38, so 70 quid for a set of elastomers and a spring, which again is, is very strong money for, for what you're buying there. Um, I mean, if you, if you opt for the kit when you buy the pedals, it's half that. So, you know, even that 38 or 40 odd notes almost for a set of elastomers uh, and a spring, still quite strong money. I've also got the universal wheel base mount that you see here. I'll just quickly show you that. It's not obviously worth a video of its own because it is just as it sounds, a universal wheel base mount designed to fit on aluminium profile. Uh, the wheel bases, it supports Moser Fanatic, Sim Magic, Thrustmaster, Camus, Acetec, Logitech, and Thrustmaster. And again, this, I think, is very strong money. And this is what I mean, like the pedals seem good value, but if you want to buy the odd random accessory on its own, a bit heavy on the money, £77 for what you see here. You know, um, yes, it's pre-drilled for all those manufacturers. You've got some angle adjustment at the side, again, all pre-drilled, and then you would bolt it down with T-nuts to the top of your aluminium profile rig. It's a fairly thick plate, I would say four mil thick for this section. The side brackets are probably only, what's that, maybe two mil? Could be three mil for the sides. So. I would perhaps have liked to have seen the size the same thickness as the main section here, especially for £77. So that is available should you need one, but I think it's a little bit strong on the money. Well, it's, it's far too strong on the money for what it is. Anyway, back to the pedals, which is what this review is actually about. I did say I'd just give that a quick mention because they asked me if I wanted to have a look at it. I said, yeah, sure, why not? This is the three pedal set for the price. Again, if we go back to the website here, there is a two pedal set option available, which is the pedals on their own, no base. 192 pounds is the basic option. Again, yeah, if you want the Pro Elastomer kit, then it's 231. So that's just for your brake pedal and your accelerator pedal. You can also buy the three pedal set without the aluminium profile base and the sort of heel plate. 256.98, again, if you choose the Pro Elastoma kit, it's another 30 notes basically for that. So quite a few different options as to whether you want the Dark Edition, whether you want it with the heel plate 
and the aluminium profile sort of base plate for fixing it to your rig, or whether you want three pedals or two pedals. Lots of options there available, and you know, a, a fine choice of elastomers as well to, to get that brake pedal feeling exactly how you want. So let's take, I'll just, so I've left the other two pedals bolted on. I've taken the brake pedal off. Uh, you do have to kind of assemble this when you get it. It comes, you know, separate pieces, three bits of aluminium profile, some custom brackets that I'll do a close up of in a minute. But this is our brake pedal. And as you can see, the fit and the finish is nice, you know, especially for, I mean, if you were to buy it three, if you were to buy exactly what I've got here uh, with the elastomers, it's 346 pounds. But you've got adjustment on the pedal face itself, up and down, left and right, using those two screws there. They're also slotted at the back, so you can then adjust it up and down even further. All the pedals are built in a similar fashion, whereby there's one long bolt that runs through to this little ball joint here. And so if you want to change your elastomers, you would just wind that out, and obviously this all comes apart. Not the quickest, you know, some other manufacturers have got very quick methods of changing elastomers, but it's, you know, it's not too bad. And once you settle on which ones you want, you're not gonna be changing it anyway. We've got our load cell here, and that obviously is what registers the pressure of the pedal. So once you've set it up, you know, set your sort of two stage, the, the red elastomers are the hardest, the yellow is the middle, and then the, the black ones, you can see in here are the softest. So you can set it up however you wish. Once you've done it, you get your sort of two stage braking, which is what we all want. So it feels like it's sort of taken up the initial play and any mechanical in interferences or interfaces throughout your car, and then it hardens up and then you can modulate quite nicely. No issue doing that. I'll put some video footage and be using the pedals up at some point in this video, but obviously you can't tell a lot from just seeing my foot press the pedals. But you can see at least how my feet sit on the pedals. Um, but again, this is all kind of customizable. Like if, well, how I've got it set up in this clip here, you could adjust the angles of the pedals, you can adjust the spacing of the pedals. So how it sits under my feet could be completely different to how you want them to sit under your feet. But it gives you an idea, I suppose. I'm a size nine uh, shoe in the UK. So that might give you an idea of how large the pedals are relative to my feet if you want to compare sort of shoe sizes to give you some idea of how big these pedals are. But aside from that, the video footage of me using the pedals is not a huge amount of help uh, to anybody, but it's there nonetheless. Anyway, back to this brake pedal. Yeah, there's our low cell setup, and obviously it will measure sort of very microscopic deflection um, there. That's how you change your elastomers. This bolt here and this slot allows you to adjust the stiffness of the pedal, you might say a little finer than adjusting the elastomers. You can slide it up and down in the slot. That's simply a leverage adjustment. So the more leverage you have, the easier it will be to compress those elastomers and the less leverage, the more direct your pressure is down this shaft, the firmer the pedal will feel. You've got that adjustment on all three pedals. The other adjustments we have for angle are here, these pre-drilled holes and this bolt at the bottom, and then this bolt here and there's another pre-drilled hole there. So a combination of adjustment there can tilt the pedals over an array of angles. And then the base of the pedal itself slotted. So when you put it on your alley profile or your you know, wheel uh, pedal plate, you can slide them forwards and backwards however you see fit. And if you do use the aluminium profile base plate here, obviously you can slide them side to side as well. So plenty of adjustment there, um, both for your sort of feel of the brake pedal and the angle of it and how you install it. The only thing I don't particularly like about this pedal, or the three pedals in fact, is the use of, uh, maybe you can see it very easily, maybe from underneath, yeah. The use of, this sort of hose here is like a damper. It's, it's, it's so that when the pedal, I can't obviously show you with the brake pedal, but it would stop against that. And it acts just to sort of soften that impact, helps keep it quiet as well. But to me, it always reminds me of cheap garden hose. Now you could also say it reminds you of, of clear fuel hose that you might find in some applications, but I just don't like it. That's a personal preference, obviously. You may not have a problem with it. 
to me, I don't like it. I'd rather that was just a plain black piece of hose if you are going to use hose um, you know, in your build. But again, like I say, personal preference. You've got your little SimForge logo on the front there as well, I just noticed. But yeah, so there's your adjustment on the brake pedal and how it's put together. The other two pedals are the same in their construction and their adjustment. You can see that. Same bolt holes, same slots, pedals bolt on in the same fashion. So this obviously is the accelerator pedal. All the pedals feel smooth underfoot. No issue with their operation there. And the clutch pedal, and I'm a big, big, big fan of this clutch pedal, is two stage. So it feels much more like a real clutch pedal disengaging and engaging than what linear clutch pedals do. Because in real life, you're overcoming the pressure of the springs on the pressure plate of a clutch. And if you, any of you have used a track car that's got a heavy clutch, then you'll know exactly what I mean. You're bringing that pedal up, trying to find your biting point, and it wants to almost ping you past it. Very easy to stall, especially if you've got a grabby clutch. You know, maybe it's a paddle clutch. So finding that point where, where it just starts to bite, you very much feel the strength of those springs that you're pushing against. And that is what we have simulated here with this pedal. So that I'm a big fan of. It's one of the reasons I liked the original Fnatic V3 pedals all those years ago, in actual fact, because they had that. Now that wasn't as pronounced as what this one is. This is very pronounced, like it's quite a, there's quite a weight there, but it's super smooth if you ever listen. Very quiet, no, no real noise to speak of. But yeah, I love, I love the engagement of that. It's great because for me, in games where I am racing H pattern, I will set my clutch up so that when I'm feeling where a biting point would be in real life on the pedal, sort of just, just as it's about to sort of ping past, that's where I set it up to in the game. So that way I can physically bring my clutch up to where a biting point would be by feel, and that's where it is in the game in the sim as well. So that I'm a really big fan of. The Acer Tech uh, Invicta pedals also had that and it was done really well. So big, big fan of that implementation. The accelerator is obviously just a linear pedal and you can adjust the, the stiffness by using this slider here. But that's lovely and smooth in operation and quiet also. No noise to speak of, so it's gonna keep Wives, girlfriends, sleeping children, happy. And if we just have a quick look at the heel plate, obviously it has SimForge cut out of it there. It's red in this instance. It's held on by those sort of custom brackets at the side, just into aluminium profile. If we look underneath, one big piece of alley profile, two small 40 by 40 lengths and some corner brackets that can be used to secure it to your rig or you can use the channels in here which is what i actually did so that's pretty much everything as far as the construction the fit the finish and how the pedals operate go oh, oh i haven't shown you and this i quite like they are it's an arduino based controller and they've done it in this sort of you know fully exposed type way, which I, which I quite like. And on the back, there's even like a logo of a, of a race driver, which I think is quite cool. Everything is labeled on here. We currently have RJ12 cables. They wanted me to point out that it was USB, or I'm assuming it was USB. They said to me, there's a copper shortage. I don't know if I have the email up. No, I haven't, not to hand. There's a copper shortage. And so they've opted to go with these rather than USB. So presumably the previous iteration of this, which would be 5.1, because this is version 5.2, uh, had USB on there. But there's nothing wrong with RJ12 um, in this application. You know, perfectly decent little cable for just connecting each pedal to the Arduino board. So nothing wrong with that as far as I'm concerned. No explanation necessary. And yeah, they also were keen to point out this is the fifth iteration of the electronics and the seventh revision of the pedals. 
And the reason for this is because every time they send a set out for review or they get some customer feedback that they think is valid, they have then applied those sort of criticisms and made improvements to the pedals based on the feedback. And they said, hopefully, Carl, we haven't got anything else left to tweak and you know they're as good as they, they need to be. And I didn't find any issues with, oh, what? So to be picky, one minor gripe, there is a little bit of side to side play, and this is not gonna be easy to do without them being bolted down, really. I should have got the footage of it when it was bolted to the rig. There's a little bit of side to side play, most noticeably in the accelerator pedal here. There was a little bit in all three pedals, not enough that I felt it underfoot when I was using them, but just something I noticed whilst you know having a little feel around of things. So it doesn't translate to anything I'll notice whilst driving, but there is a little side to side play there. So yeah, I, I think they're a great set of pedals and if you like the way they look um, and you're happy with the price, then they're good. The only other thing I wanna talk about briefly is the software and the instructions. This is all that came with it for me. And there's QR codes you can scan that takes you to a calibration video, an assembly video, and there is, if you go to their website, then there is a link to the SimForge FX software and the drivers you need to install the Arduino. Now, whilst they have good instructional videos showing you how to do this, it is a little more hands-on than perhaps most other pedal manufacturers where you either just install their software, whether it be Fnatic or Acertec, and you plug the pedals in and they're done. This is a little bit more hands-on. There's some copying of files around and a little bit more sort of setting up than, than perhaps some others. The video is clear and easy to follow, so no issues with it. Just worth mentioning that it does require a little more time and a little more hands-on than some other manufacturers have gone with. We'll also have a quick look at the PDF manual that you can download, which you see here. Uh, again, table of contents, getting started with the electronics, mounting and adjustments. There's a little disclaimer there about not using the pedals in real life. And also, yes, it doesn't come with tools, but it does list the tools you need here for the assembly and the adjustments. And then here's the links to the two videos telling you how to install the firmware and the drivers and a link to how to use the pedal effects software as well. The manual here itself gives you the dimensions of the pedals and the base plate as well. And then it goes on to show you how to make your adjustments as I covered earlier in the video, how to adjust the hardness and the softness. And then um, anything else here? Oh, telling you which bumpers are the most um, stiff and a little DIY tip about wrapping red electrical tape around something um, if you need it to be a little quieter, which is when the pedal sort of returns to its upright position, the metal hits on some metal. I never noticed it, to be honest. Uh, what else have we got in here? Oh yeah, so here's where it explains about your three different elastomer strengths. The black is 70 sure, yellow is 80, red is 90. Obviously you can do whatever configuration you want. And this one they show you here is the hardest configuration for the brake pedal, should you wanna jump straight to that. And that is everything we have in that manual there. So everything is pretty, pretty well covered, but there is, as I say, a little bit more hands-on. You've gotta download the PDF manual. You've gotta download the drivers in the firmware. Then you've gotta download the pedal effects software. And then you've got to follow the two video links to show you how to use everything. It's not as smooth and as quick as some others, perhaps. And because it's one of the reasons I haven't gone through it step by step, it would make the video quite long. But it isn't necessary because they've documented the physical stuff here in that manual. And then there's the two videos covering how to do the other things as well. So I think that's probably everything we've covered. You've, you've had a close up look around the pedals themselves. I've shown you the various different adjustments. I've shown you how they mount and install. I've shown you the various elastomer options, the three pedal option, two pedal option, dark edition, non-dark edition, without the pedal tray and heel rest, with the pedal tray and heel rest, the somewhat expensive universal 
wheel mount and then the what I find quite cool Arduino based electronics board. So yeah, that is pretty much everything. Should you wish to pick up a set of these pedals, I think the website was saying pre-order at the moment, shipping in a couple of weeks time. There is a discount with my link as well. So feel free to go through to Sinford shop, have a little goosey and if you fancy a set, I don't see any reason not to recommend them. They are a decent set of pedals and they are reasonably priced. And should you want multiple elastomers, the best option is definitely to buy them at the time of buying the pedals and not to pay the 69, 70 pounds for them afterwards because that is far too much money for a bag of elastomers. Uh, yeah, so I think that's pretty much everything. As always, thank you very much for watching and take it easy.